Ladies and gentlemen, do not adjust your YouTube URL. That's right, you are watching Gamer Logic, the world champion of video games. And on this episode, we're gonna talk about something very near and dear to my heart. We're gonna cover a genre of games known as Whoa, 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 whoa. The mat says you need to know your role and shut your mouth because finally wrestling games have come back to gamer logic. <laughs> So welcome folks to another episode of Gamer Logic. I'm Mike Murtis, of course, and this is my little brother Matt Murtis. Growing up, me and you have been huge wrestling fans for years. Now you've actually been a wrestling fan longer than me, we'll say, uh, getting into WCW and other stuff, but I would say that our first video game memories start way back in the Super Nintendo era. Didn't touch any of the Nintendo ones, but we started in the Super Nintendo era. Matt, would you say that's true? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so we're going to start with a game that I've never really liked from the get-go, and you used to play the crap out of it, didn't you? Yeah, okay. definitely did. So, Matt, please do the introduction for this fantastic game here. Oh yeah, it's Super WrestleMania for the Super Nintendo. Oh yeah, snap it to a Slim Jim. So Matt, Super WrestleMania was a game that I really didn't enjoy that much. And thinking back saying that, you know, wrestling games started for us on the Super Nintendo, I guess really isn't true because there were a couple regular Nintendo wrestling games that I played back in the day and so did you. But they weren't really that good and I don't remember exactly why. Do you remember? Oh, graphically, really, it was, graphically it wasn't good. Uh, that and the controls were god awful and by the time you got to the third or fourth character after winning they would just decimate you the game became impossible and i, th I think i remember everyone pretty much had the same moves there were no real special moves or anything like that right. everyone had the same standard move set so when acclaim came out with this in god i want to say it was 91, 91. 92 with super wrestlemania um it was quite a graphical overhaul because you could see the characters, you could at least make out who they were, pretty close anyway. And I am not a huge fan of this game. I didn't enjoy it back in the day at all, but I do have a confession to make. And this is where I started falling in love with uh, wrestling music themes. I do remember turning on the game, turning on my boom box and going through each individual character to hear the Super NES sound chip basically mimic all the great intros that the WWF games had back then and you know, like Undertaker, Hulk Hogan, they were pretty damn good renditions, mm -hmm. at least on the Super Nintendo. I don't know about the Genesis, but you and your friends used to play these games constantly. Now, not talking about them now from what you've replayed, but back then, you know, why did you enjoy it so much? Uh, you got to play as all your favorite wrestlers and be in control and then mash the hell out of the controllers. We used to play so much, we'd literally get blisters on our thumbs, just mashing back and forth. We had a blast doing all their finishing moves. Uh, not so much with Super WrestleMania. It was pretty much more of just a character kind of thing. Most of the wrestlers, they did all the same moves. 
it wasn't until a few years later when WWF Royal Rumble and WWF Raw came out as when everyone started getting their own finishing moves and things got a little bit better as far as what you were able to do as far as rolling out of the ring uh, they actually added chairs and buckets that you could hit people with so it was I remember the buckets yes. yeah you see, my thing with Super WrestleMania is it was very clunky to me. And the fact that there was never a surefire way to get a grapple to start. There wasn't a real button you would hit. You'd have to be in the general area. And then I think he kind of hit X, and I think it just kind of happened. But there wasn't uh, any way to just grapple in the air to see if you missed it. And pounding on the buttons and stuff, it was a pain in the ass. Because if one person's fingers happen to be faster than the other if they knew the method you were done it's not like say a fire pro wrestling where you know you you hit the move as soon as you hear that snap grapple and you go and it was a matter of who got it there first that to me was more fair so uh playing it now and coming back to it to see if i liked it anymore uh the answer is no i would skip this if i could go back in time and smack myself around and say don't play this because i i really didn't have a good time with it um, you kicked my ass in it, of course, very, very quickly, and it, it seemed really unbalanced because you were trashing me for like, <laughs> uh, in a Survivor Series match for like four characters, and then all of a sudden I switched and was kicking your ass, and then the game was just like, nope, you're done. What do you think of it now? Uh, you have a point. The game is very unbalanced as far as, it's it's really not a skill game. It's button mashing, and you get a couple fingers in quicker than the uh other Opponent, person yeah, yeah it's, and it's over and it's over so would you would you pick it up now is a question probably not probably not okay fair enough well let's go on to the next game so this next game that came out is from capcom and this is still one of my favorites i really enjoy this it's very very arcadey feel to it and that is saturday night slam masters from capcom Uh, Matt, do you remember playing this one at all? Uh, a few times. I think you relate to it a little more because it has a similarity to Final Fight. Mm -hmm. It relates. Haggers uh, in it, so right. yeah. So yeah. I think you related that a little more. I didn't really see a, a wrestling game to it. I just saw a couple of grapples and pretty much just like an arcade beat em up kind of game. So I don't think I enjoyed it as much as you did, but it's all right. I mean, playing it now, would you would you play it? I mean, it's it's flexible enough where you really don't know have to know too much about the game in order to play it. You can button mash in a good way and get some good results. Where compared to WWF Super WrestleMania, you can mash and it don't matter if the person's faster than you, you're screwed. Right. So, uh, I don't know. I found it difficult to do anything in the game. Yeah, I so to me, I like the characters. I like the, the they're clones of actual wrestlers, but not completely clones. They're kind of original in their own way. The overall presentation of the game is awesome. I mean, the graphics look great. They got intros. They got their own theme music. They actually come out to the ring, which Super WrestleMania at the time did not do that. And there's enough variety in it to make it fun. There's not much of a storyline per se, but in terms of classic Capcom beat 'em up meets pro wrestling game, it's awesome and it beats the living hell out of neo geo's three count bout have you ever played neo geo three count bout mm -hmm. after we're done with this i'm gonna have you play that and you're gonna agree with me between those two games you want saturday night slam master so, so for me modern 
I would play it again, no question. Matt, not so much? No. All right. Well, let's move on to our next game. Now, prior to just a little while ago, just a couple hours ago, really, neither of us had really played it. Um, this is WWF Rage in the Cage on the Sega CD. And the reason I didn't play it was I wasn't a Genesis kid. We grew up in the same house. We, didn't we have... Yeah, we weren't Sega kids. Right. And why were we going to play anything on a Sega CD? Because we didn't have a Genesis. Right. So how the hell was that going to happen? Uh, but going to a retro game store, I actually saw this. It was 7 bucks, And being a wrestling fan, I decided to check it out. I picked it up a while ago, actually, and never bothered to play it. But we popped it in. Matt, what was your initial impression of this game? Uh, it reminded me a lot of WWF Royal Rumble and WWF Raw uh, with the addition of a few extra characters considering it was on a CD as opposed to a cartridge. Mm -hmm. uh, the intros that they had with the talking was awesome. The following contest to take place inside of the Steel Cage is scheduled for one fall. To my left, from Minnesota, weighing 263 pounds, Mr. Perfect. Do you really think you can handle the most perfect wrestler there is? To my right, from Miami, Florida, weighing 287 pounds, Razor Ramon. Say hello to the bad guy, Razor Ramon. Yeah, I mean, if you could go back in time and me and you were sitting in front of a Sega CD and we popped that in and we heard Howard Finkel doing the announcements for everything, I think we would have been pretty blown away. Oh, yeah, definitely. Also, you know, at least on my end, not knowing the wrestler's moves at the time, I think the fact that, you know, I could hit the start button and I could see a, granted, very poor, grainy like four color monochrome video of a wrestler pulling off its moves. But for example, if you hit start, you can actually see Razor Ramon, the bad guy, do his Razor's Edge, which was pretty damn cool. Um, so, you know, in that aspect, uh, it, it's definitely better than Super WrestleMania. Uh, it still has the, the same grappling system, though it's a little bit more refined. Um, I wouldn't say I'd never play it again, but I wouldn't actively seek it out. I don't know. What do you think, Matt? Uh, if I knew the controls a little better, because that was ridiculous towards the end of the game when we're trying to figure out how to get out of the cage or how to make a pin. Yeah. Uh, having three buttons on a Genesis with a game opposed to the Super Nintendo when you have six buttons. Six buttons yeah kind of made the game a little more difficult to play. You had to hit two buttons at a time to do certain things. So... But besides the frustration with the controls, I would probably play it again. Yeah, so overall, not too bad. So I, I we both kind of agree that we would check it out again. So WWF, Rage in a Cage, we may come back to that one. So the next game is actually on the original Nintendo Entertainment System, and that is Tecmo World Wrestling. <music>
uh, one of my mom's friends used to bring over her son's video games all the time, like four or five of them. The kid always had like just tons of different video games and stuff you would never see in the rental store. So that's the first time I played it. And I will say that this game is the first wrestling game that I really got sucked into. I mean, for being an original Nintendo game, it really does have the complete package to it. Matt, do you want to talk about some of your memories? Do you remember much of it when you were a little kid? Do not actually. Um, as opposed to the graphics, playing it so many years later, I will say the grappling system is more balanced. You can fight back a little easier than you could with other games. So I actually had a lot of fun playing it. That's definitely another one I would go back to for sure, just as a, a be good beat em up wrestling game and some humor as well. Oh yeah, but the fact that you can name your wrestlers, we, we got in a lot of trouble with that. But I mean, I had a blast with it, playing it again. All the different characters, there's, when you do certain moves, they have their own uh, Tecmo Cinema, so kind of similar to like the, the Ninja Gaiden games. Very similar to that. Uh, like his giant swing, the one wrestler was doing, it would cut to a cut scene and you would just get a really huge emphasis that this was going to be a really damaging move to the opposite wrestler. And I mean, it's got a commentary system. All right. What game can you think of that came out? I mean, you think about the WWF games in the 90s. They didn't have any kind of commentary. Yeah, uh, this did. game was really ahead of its time. It was a lot of fun. So... Um, if you're looking for a good NES wrestling game, we both agree, definitely pick this one up. A lot of fun, Tecmo World Wrestling. Well, it's time to reveal the final game. Let's get to that. Now this one is my favorite wrestling game. It's your favorite wrestling game. It's a lot of people's favorite wrestling game and still stands the test of time. This is WWF No Mercy. <laughs> Uh, WWF No Mercy, how many ways can I love you? I mean, it's a fantastic game. Character creation, story mode, tons of different options, title matches, cage matches. Oh my God. Storyline mode was the most engaging storyline mode in a wrestling game at that time. I remember buying a Nintendo 64 off of eBay because I wanted to be able to play this game. Actually, I think we rented. We rented we a rented Nintendo 64 yes, in order to play No Mercy. We actually had to get the expansion pack, too, because it needed it for that. Matt, what do you remember about playing No Mercy back in the day? I remember, I think it was like 8 o'clock at night when we plugged that thing in and started playing it. And just from the very beginning, the opening cutscene, we were just instantly blown away with this game, with the voices and everything. And everything it the game is the total package it really is it is and it blows my mind how even after all of these years we have the wwf 2k games 2014 came out carbon copy of all the other wwf 2k games why hasn't anybody gone back and touched this wrestling system or even made a remake throw out 
all the wrestlers that don't belong to it, add in new ones. They did it on the iPad with WWF, WWE superstars, and that was based off the arcade game, and that didn't have everybody in it. It had new characters that worked great. I don't get why we haven't seen a re-release of this instant, instant bestseller. Maybe, maybe 2K Sports will pick that idea up and go, you know, hey, we own the intellectual property to this now. Maybe we can make that happen. Because I think Yokes did the the development for that, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure. So, but, uh, God, I mean, you talked about playing it for hours when we got it. Um, this was obviously my high school time, and me and Matt would go over to a friend's house who would get all the WWF pay-per-views, and it would be a bunch of us coming over. And it went like this. We went to his house. We played WWF, WrestleMania 2000, WWF No Mercy. Then we'd go outside and wrestle on the trampoline. Kick each other's asses. Pizza would come. We'd eat pizza. Pay-per-view would start, and we would watch it. And anytime I pop in an N64 WWF wrestling game, I instantly get taken back to those times. And, you know, I... I have so many good memories with the wrestling business, period, but the, the wrestling video games that come with it, just fantastic. So do you even really need to ask the question of whether or not you should pick this up if you're a wrestling fan? Go get it right now. Stop this video, go on eBay, go to your local retro game store, go buy WWF No Mercy. If you've never played it and you're a wrestling fan, you're seriously, truly missing out on something fantastic. Do you agree? Yes! Oh.